I want to thank God for this wonderful day and this wonderful opportunity. Amen. To stand before you. I always count it a blessing. Amen. But before I do anything else, I just want to welcome my wife, Jennifer Baguma. <laughs> Amen. She has a testimony. The Lord did something mighty in her life. Amen. Amen. Let's give her a hand clap as she comes. Uganda, um, I think I told several people that I spent some time in a labor and delivery unit there. Um, it was very heartbreaking, very s sad. Thank you, Lord. Um, it was really sad, and I was like, I have a little bit of a medical background. I was an x-ray um, aide in Wyoming. I've worked in a rehab center for disabled adults, doing basic, basically nursing duties um, without a nursing license, which wasn't required, by the way, so I wasn't doing anything illegal. But... <laughs> Mr. Leroy, <laughs> peanut gallery back there, but um, <laughs> so um, so I was like, when I got back, I was like, God, what can I do to try to help these people from a medical standpoint? So I was like, well, I can go back to school. So let me look into that. So I looked into a medical assistant course, which has some office work, which I don't mind, but that's not what I really want to do. I want the hands-on. You know, I want to start the IVs. I want to see the blood, the guts, the gore, um, because I don't mind it. So I went to um, Allstate, which is a trade school, and I applied um, for financial aid. To cut to the chase, you're, you're pretty much automatically accepted in the program. It's not like it's a, you know, we only take three people out of the 500 that apply. It's not real tight admission rules. So, um, so I went there, applied, got in, filled out the financial aid paperwork, and this past Tuesday was orientation. Class is supposed to start this coming Monday. So orientation, I get there, and I'm in the middle of orientation, and I hear people talking about their monthly payments that they have to make. One lady's is like $811, and I about fell over, and I was like, she must have not got financial aid. Maybe she's doing it on her own. So they called me out of orientation and wanted me to go down to financial aid because they were reviewing. They got the, some the loan and all the stuff put together. And I knew that I'd have some student loans, which wasn't a big deal because I knew how they worked. So um, so they were like, okay, so your out-of-pocket expenses are going to be three thirty a month. And I was like, yeah, we can cancel this now. I don't have it. There's no way. I, I just don't, I don't work. I stay home with the kids. And um, I was like, I can't do this. And I said, we'll have to figure out something else out. So she gave me an option. She said, go home, figure it out. So I tried it. It was declined. I was like, all right, God. I was like, this, I, I can't do this. So I went to Facebook, of course, my outlet. And um because some people knew that I was going to try to do this class. So I went on there, and I was um, basically like, so I was going to try to take this course. It didn't go through. They want me to do $330 a month. It's like 2974 was the total amount that was due on my, on my end, and then I could go to class. But it was 330 a month for the nine months that the class is. I was like, I don't have it. So um, some lady on there, is she's she – She's actually Ray Rice's PR rep. I'm Facebook friends with her. I've never met her, but we talk on Facebook. And um, and I know a couple of the players and their PR reps. And she was she was asking me questions about it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just answer them, whatever. You're asking a question, I answer. Somebody else asked me the name of the counselor, so I answered. And not realizing what this, it was kind of a setup, and I didn't know it. I look back on it now and see it was a setup. Um, in the end, to get to cut to the chase, they called me, let's see, that was Tuesday. They called me Wednesday. Wednesday, I got an email from financial aid, and it said, well, I have to go back to Tuesday. Tuesday, I, I quit. I was trying to do it by myself, and I was like, oh, I'll try to make some calls to state delegates on Wednesday morning and see if I can find any scholarships or grant money. So early Wednesday morning, I was hitting the phones, calling my local state. I'm like, do you have any money? Do you have this? Do you have that? Where can I go? What can I look for? And then finally, I called Judah. I was like, I can't do it no more. I said, if God wants me, if this is what I'm supposed to do, and I'm supposed to help these people by doing this, I said, God will open that door because right now it's closed. I, I, I can't do it. So I was like, God, I said, you, you have to take over because I, I, here's the steering wheel drive for me. Um, so then probably about an hour later, I got an email on my phone. I was, it said, call financial aid right away. You have a scholarship. I was like, what? Okay, scholarship. Maybe it's like a $500 or 1000 Somebody saw my Facebook post. It turns out somebody saw my Facebook post, um, called my counselor that they knew because somebody asked 
who my counselor's name was, and I said, oh, because this kid that asked me went to the school, and, and we're friends from up in Essex. So he was just curious who it was. Called this counselor. The counselor told her, or told the, the whoever, it's a woman that did it. The woman told the counselor, Jennifer has done a lot of good things for other people and a lot of good works in Africa, and I want to pay her $2,974. Let's do it. <laughs> like, I don't know who could have done that. So, um, so they told me to come up. Everything was taken care of, and all I needed to bring was $25 to fill out an application. So that's all I did. I went up there that day and filled it out. And then, the, and then the, was it Thursday? I think Thursday night, my back had been hurting really bad for like two nights in a row. I need a new mattress, basically. But, um, but my back has been hurting really bad. And we were praying before we went to bed. The kids were already in bed. Me and him were laying there praying. And I was, he was praying for my back. And he didn't know at the time. But I was praying for my back also. I saw, you know, sometimes when you, when you get healed from something, you can feel like a fire or you can feel a chill, or you can feel something physically manifesting in your body, and you can feel it leaving your body. So I was praying, I was like, God, I want to feel fire, because I was kind of cold anyway. So I was like, I want to feel a fire in my back and feel it like, I want to feel it physically be removed, like, like other people do, and other people have that sensation. Fell asleep. An hour later, I woke up in such a sweat. I was sweating so bad. I was hot, like hot, hot. And I threw the blankets off, and I woke up, and I'm like, whew. It's hot in here, and my back didn't hurt and has not hurt since. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor that God we serve is a mighty God. Mighty God. Amen. Amen. Americans say mighty or whatever they say, but he's a mighty God. Amen. I just want to thank God for this wonderful day. I'm going to be so quick and so fast. Amen. And uh, I only ask that the Spirit of God will minister to you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Trying to put myself together. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, just open in the book of uh, Hebrews, chapter 6. You got a Bible? And if you're there, say amen. 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 Who's there first will read for us. Hebrews 6 and verse 10. Amen. In any version. Anybody there? Say amen. 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 Just the first chapter? Just uh, Hebrews 6, verse 10. 10. Verse 10, okay. Yes. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Amen. Go to verse 11. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. Amen. Let's go to 12. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, when I said praise the Lord, just say amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because that will show me that you're walking together with me this morning. Amen. amen. The Bible is saying that God is not unjust or oh, God is not other versions say God is not unrighteous. Amen. He's saying he's not unjust that he's gonna forget anything you've done for his people. Amen. I just want to turn to pastor and say God is not unjust. He sees every small little thing that you do. Even when you get on your knees and pray, he listens. He sees it. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you this morning that God is not unjust. He will not forget Bible says he will not forget the work and the labor of love that you've showed to his people. You know, the way you've ministered to them, whatever you've done and whatever you've gone through. God is not unjust. He's not going to forget you. Amen. Amen. And continues to say that each one of us should show the same kind of diligence. We should show the same kind of passion. We should do the same thing. Amen. Do for others. Hallelujah. Minister to others through love. Amen. Amen. 
So God is calling us to minister to other people out there. God is calling you to minister to your family. Amen. It could be by prayer. It could be by something small. Whatever you can do to improve on somebody's life. Whatever you can do in a moment to bring joy and to bring the good news of Jesus Christ, please just go ahead and do it. Amen. It could be a hug. It could be a smile. Amen. 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 I've been in situations where I've gone to places and probably I'm so tired. I'm so, I've the story is I went to downtown, Baltimore City, you know, housing, uh, as I'm, you know, applying for a permit for my place of work, and I went in there, and on my way down to the permit office, I was praying, and I was praying, and praying, and, uh, you know, I always have church in my truck. <laughs> Amen. I got a pickup truck, I always have church in there. Amen. So... I always praise, I worship, I pray, I, I see kids walking on the street, I pray for them. I see guys on the corner, you know, passing drugs and doing all kinds of things, I pray for them, amen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I just pray. My duty is to pray, and it's, God, it's God's duty to do what to answer and to do stuff, amen. amen. So my duty is just to pray. I normally do that kind of, you know, things, you know. They, they, they make me feel good, they make me feel like I'm I'm together with God, you know, it makes me feel the presence of God right there with me, amen. So I, I always pray. So I went to the permit's office and I was praying and praying. I did all these things. And so I stood in front of this woman and I had this face, you know, there's that prayer face. A few people pray while smiling. Have you ever noticed? Most of us when we're praying, we have that look of, yeah, you know, you know, there's fire, you know. So I had that look and she looked at me, she's like, if you don't smile, I'm not going to serve you. So I looked at myself in a, there was a, like a reflection in a glass. I, I, I saw my face. I was like, oh my God, I'm not smiling. So I put on a, a quick smile there and then. I was like, okay. And she, started, she knew me. She was just messing with me. Amen? What am I trying to say? That even the smallest things in our lives, amen, will change somebody's life out there. Amen? So I just want to say that we appreciate our past. I will never forget the moment. She might not know, but I will never forget the moment when this pastor sat with the pastor that raised me to be where I am right now. Amen? Just seeing these two guys in the same room and I'm seated on the table and I'm watching them and they're talking. Amen? You know, it, it brought such kind of encouragement in my life. I was like, yes, you know, it, it's a blessing. Amen? It's a blessing to be accountable to somebody. So my pastor over there, he is, he's so confident, and he told me he's confident. He knows I'm in good hands in the U.S. Amen. 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 You should say amen to that. Amen. amen. He's so confident. And, and this is what happened. I told you this some time back. That uh, he was sit you're sitting on the table we're sitting when we're eating during that luncheon and all that. My pastor in Uganda had preached about Gideon the week before. They've never met. I think we only met him on a Wednesday. I think we went to see him on Wednesday that week after he had preached about Gideon. They talked. They never shared. He, my pastor never told this pastor what he had shared. Amen? So pastor is called. Oh, yeah. Can you preach this Sunday morning? Mm, sure, pastor was there. You know, we went to the church, you know, praise and worship, and then he stood up and he was preaching about Gideon. Second service, he preached about Gideon. And to me, it was such an affirmation that uh, I'm in a place where I'm supposed to be. Amen. Amen. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to thank God for his grace and his mercies. Amen. I just want to encourage my pastor this morning that God is not unrighteous, is not unjust, that he will forget your work, and the level of love that you show toward these people. And he's saying, continue ministering. Continue doing good. Amen. The war is not yet over. Amen. Until Jesus Christ comes back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's an encouragement to my pastor this morning. I pray and I hope he's encouraged. Because each time I think about the scripture, it pushes me to do more things for other people. Amen. Amen. Some people when you do good things to other people all the time, some people think you're stupid. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. There are people in society that people do not expect you to help or do something good for them. 
But when you do it for them, then they say you're stupid. You're ignorant. You don't know. Oh, he's taking advantage over you. They're taking advantage. Have you heard of those words? They're taking advantage over you. Amen. The Bible is telling me my duty is one. If the other person is taking advantage over me, it's between him or her and his God. I am going to do what God requires me to do. And God requires me to do good. Amen. I'll continue doing good. I'll continue doing good. Amen. Amen. Even to my enemies. Even to my enemies, I'll continue doing good. Until God says stop. But he hasn't said stop because I don't see it in the Bible. And I haven't heard his voice telling me stop doing good. Amen. So I just want to encourage us this morning. Let us continue doing good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now I'm going to start preaching. Amen. <laughs> that was just an encouragement. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, let's go to the book of... Uh, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 33. It's a famous scripture that everybody knows it. Amen. If you don't know it, then you're not reading your Bible. You better read your Bible. It's like knowing Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I'm talking about Psalms 133. 133. Amen. If you're there, say amen. amen. That's a nice number to call, 133. Instead of 911, 133. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you're there, say amen. amen. And you can read if you're there. Just read it loud. Hallelujah. The Bible is saying how good it is, how sweet, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Not only together, but in unity. Amen. How pleasant and how sweet it is for us to dwell together in unity. Amen. In unity. Amen. The Bible says that in a book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 3, says, How can two people walk together unless they do what? They agree. Amen. I remember when I was a child in elementary school, there is what we used, there is a race that was called the three-legged race. Do you know that one? Where they tie you with somebody else's leg. Legs are tied together and you got to hold yourselves together and you got to run together. Amen. Do you remember that race? I remember that race because I won. I won a plastic cup. Amen. With a guy, his name is called uh, Weekly. If I still remember, his, he was my best friend. He was my best friend. I was, uh, I think, in grade, um, we, we call it primary, uh, P3. That's like third grade. I'll, I'll, I'll put it that way. But the first time we tried it, the first time we tried three-legged race, it was crazy. Amen? His leg was going forward. My leg was going back. So behold, we're on the ground. Amen? It was so tough. It was so hard. So we practiced and practiced and practiced. And so time came for the competitions. They tied our legs together. And, and, and we ran like we we're twins. You know, it was just like, you know, it was like just one person running. We're so fast. We're so good at it. Amen. Because we're in agreement. Our legs were in agreement. Our pace was in agreement. Amen. And this is so funny that you cannot run not holding hands, but you got to hold each other's shoulder. You got to hold on. You got to hold tight. Amen. So the Bible is saying how pleasant and how good it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. Three-legged rest. That's how I'm going to call it. 
No wonder the Bible, it's in the book of Psalms 1, 3, 3. Amen. How pleasant it is. Amen. So God is calling us to be united. Amen. I'm trying to go somewhere. The preacher last week was talking about church growth. Amen. But there's no way we're going to grow together. There's no way we're going to grow if one's mind is on the other side and the other mind is on the other side. One mind is going right, the other is going left. There's going to be a lot of fighting. Amen. So God is calling us to be united in prayer. The Bible declares that after Jesus told the disciples to go in the upper room, it says they were in the upper room in one accord, praying. In one accord, all of them together in one accord, praying. And the Spirit of the Lord came in like a mighty rushing wind. Amen. And after that, they received power. And after they received power, Peter got outside, told the people, oh, these guys are not drunk. They're just filled with the Holy Spirit. And he told them what had happened. And the Bible declares that 3,000 souls or 5,000, was 3,000 souls were added to the body of Christ that day. Because those guys were in unity. They stood behind Peter. Amen. I'm sure when you got outside to speak, they all came out. Amen. So God is calling us to be united. The world out there is watching. There are so many organizations out there that are not up to something good, but they are, you know, they are, they are successful because they are united. Amen. They're united. They got a strategy. They're united. They're doing something out of there. Amen. And how much more is it for us, we the children of God, who have got the anointing of God, who have got the spirit of God, who have got Jesus in us? How powerful would it be if we come together in prayer, in intercession, in doing good and moving forward in unity? Amen. How powerful would that be? Amen. That would be a very powerful movement. Amen. And God is calling us to do so. God is calling the church to be united. He's calling us. I'm not talking about any church out there. I am just talking to everybody who is here. And everybody probably listening to me on the internet. I don't know. But I'm just saying God is calling us to be united. The time has come for us to arise. The time has come for us to awake. The time has come for us to go out there and preach the gospel in unity. Amen. The world is watching us, whatever we do. And there is nothing that devil is doing right now other than to dismantle the church. Divisions, families, disunited. That's what the devil is doing, right? That's the strategy. We have a saying in my language that the teeth that is together bites the best. Just imagine your mouth. If you only had one tooth over here and there's nothing in between here and there's one back here. Are you going to enjoy steak? <laughs> You're not going to enjoy it. Trust me. But when the teeth are together, amen, they bite the strongest. I mean, their bite is always the strongest bite that can be delivered. Amen. So God is calling us to be united. I don't care if two or three. The Bible declares, it doesn't even say a hundred or twenty. It says two or three gathered in my name. They shall be in their midst. Amen. And the Bible continues to say in Matthew, is it Matthew 18, 19? It says, that, it, it says that if two or three shall agree as to anything, if two or three shall agree as into anything, it shall be done. Who said those words? Jesus himself. Amen. So I don't doubt it. I know it. That if two or three of us shall can put ourselves together in prayer and fasting and, and doing all these kind of things, something good is going to happen. Something mighty is going to happen in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? Sometimes God is... God looks at his children and I think sometimes he cries. Sometimes he weeps. And he weeps because of the way we are so disunited. Because of the way we are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. Amen? This is a nation where people think individually. You know, it's what's in for me? What's in for me? That's the mentality in this country. Amen. What is in for me? Amen. Where do I benefit? Amen. The big picture is we're trying to save souls from going to hell. To bring them to the knowledge of the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. But there's no way it's going to happen if our minds are so scattered on so many other things, 
There is a system in this country. The system in this country is one. It keeps you on tiptoes. It's, it's the bills. Uh, when I talk about bills, I'm talking about your BGE or your gas and electric. It's, it, those are things that we think about first before we think about anything else. Those are things we think about first. But the kingdom of God is in a reverse way. You think about God first and these other things follow after you. That's God. But this country and the system tells you or shows you or points in a direction whereby think about yourself first and then God comes next. But the Bible is saying, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness and all these things are going to follow you. Amen. So God is calling us to that place. The hour is now, the time is now for us to awake, to arise, open up your eyes. Something is happening. Something big is going to happen in this place. Amen. Something good is going to happen. Amen. I don't want you to be left behind. I want you to jump into the bandwagon. Amen. When it is time for prayer, be here. Let's pray. Let's travel in prayer. The Bible says that a prayer of a righteous man does what? What about a prayer of righteous men and women? What would that happen? And we're going to change cities, and we're going to change nations, and we're going to change our school systems. We can change anything. Amen. We got all the tools that we have, but we're just sleeping on them. Amen. Yeah. Th there's a scripture in the Bible that says that it's better, to, um, it's better to have a dog that is alive than a dead lion. Amen. Right now we have lots of dogs running around. <laughs> to be a dog in the Bible is not a good thing. The last time I remember, it's the dogs that go back to their vomits in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. To be a dog in the Bible is not a good thing. Because when you're a dog, then you eat from the, you eat the crumbs that fall off the table. That's what the Bible says. It's the dogs that eat off of the, you know, the crumbs that fall on the ground. So many of us who have dogs, how many of you put dogs on your tables when visitors come? You get your dog, you put it on the table, everybody is eating and your dog is also reaching out and eating this and that. How many of us do that? Much as we love our dogs. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We normally put them on, the, you know, they're always down there. You know, that's when other kids that don't like eating these other fruits, you know, they throw the food underneath the table. What am I trying to say this moment? That the church is like a lion that is just sleeping. It's right there. We got the authority. The Bible declares that we shall command demons to flee and they shall flee. I've seen demons flee. I've seen people being delivered. I've, I've seen people being set free. Amen. I stand here as a witness to say I've seen which doctors and sorcerers give their lives to Christ. What I'm talking about is that we have the highest power. What I'm talking about, we have the Jesus. Greater that, is, greater that is in me than that that is in the world. Amen. The Jesus that is in us is greater than any other thing that is out there. Amen. So the Jesus that we have in our lives has empowered us, has given us the anointing, has given us the authority. But the devil normally gives you all these whispers. Ah, you can't do that. Oh, you, you, you can't do that. Oh, this is going to happen. Oh, this and that. What, what if it doesn't happen? What if it happens? You get all those kind of thoughts. Amen. I just want to make it simple and easy for you. You just do what the Lord has told you to do and leave the rest to God. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes I pray and I don't know what I'm praying for, but I just pray and I just leave everything to God. Because sometimes when we apply our knowledge and our wisdom, at the end of the day, we're going to take away the glory from God and bring it to ourselves. Saying, oh, I prayed this way and I prayed that way and happened this way. And I knew what was going to happen. Amen. But God is just calling us to pray, to intercede. God is, God is calling us to be in unity. Amen. He's calling us to be one. He's calling us to be one. One-minded. One-minded in Christ. Amen. one mind in Jesus Christ. Amen. So I just want to encourage us to arise and awake this morning. Arise. Open up your eyes. Open up your spiritual eyes. Open up your heart. God is not done with us. Amen. He's calling us to be one. One in the spirit. Nothing is going to happen if you're scattered. Amen. One can chase away a hundred, but two chase away how many? Ten thousand. So do the math. How many are we here right now? If all of us, we arose and we started casting demons right now, how many demons are we casting out right now? Amen. God has given us the power and authority to do these things. Amen. 
I have seen the dead rise. Amen. I stand here to say, I have seen the dead arise. Amen. In America, you don't say those things. Because they're going to question you. How did it happen? Probably the person was unconscious, this and that. I've seen the dead arise. I remember we were in southwestern Uganda. That's, uh, uh, like I said last time, Papa Daniel and uh, those guys will tell you. We were on a crusade. We were preaching and preaching and praying and preaching and doing this and doing this. So it was an open air meeting. And behold, there was a guy that had died. Two days dead. So they were taking him to his village where he belongs. And these guys didn't have a car. They didn't have any means of transport to get up to the mountain where they were going to bury this guy. This guy was wrapped up in a, in a I, mem I remember the blanket. I remember the white sheet. And uh, he was on a bicycle. So what they normally do, they get sticks from up all the way to down. And they, you know, they bind it together. You know, they get like five sticks and then they bind it together so your hands are not everywhere. You're contained. <laughs> Amen. They're taking this guy on a bike, wheeling him away. We're praying because this is how we, we used to do it in college. When one of us is praying, is preaching on the pulpit, five of us are behind the pulpit praying. Seven of us are just walking in the congregation around people praying and interceding and praying that God will save souls. The most important thing was always when, the most important time on those crusades is always when we say, who wants to give their lives to Jesus Christ? And then you see all these hands popping up and you see these people walking to the front to give their lives to Christ. But behold, when this guy was being wheeled on the crusade grounds, being taken <laughs> to his final destination, this guy started coughing. The dead body started coughing and everybody started to look back. And there was a commotion that time. So when I say I've seen the dead rise, I just want to encourage you this morning that we serve a God who does mighty and mighty things. Amen. He still does great things even now. Amen. Amen. But we're in a country. We are in a place where they question everything that you do. Even right now when you talk about Jesus, they question who Jesus is. There's a time I got into it with my co-worker. You know, he was telling me homosexuality and gay, uh, that God and those says all these things. I said, no, he does not. He said, how do you know it? I said, I know it because he says so. Where does he say it? I, I know he says it because in my spirit he says it. it's wrong. It's even in the Bible. It talks about unnatural relationships. Unnatural relationships. God condemns it. If God says to homosexuality, amen, like other preachers say and other people say, he's about to get on his knees and apologize to people in Sodom and Gomorrah. He's about to get them from hell and take them to heaven. Amen. But that's not going to happen. Amen. But let's not lose hope. Our God is a mighty God. He's waiting for us to awake, awaken, arise. How many of us pray in the morning when you get up? In the morning. How many of us pray in the night, even before you go to bed, you pray. You, you say a prayer and say, Lord, I, I'm praying for pastor. I'm praying for this. Lord, do something tomorrow. Let something mighty happen tomorrow. Amen. Most of us are living a life where we're just looking at the bills, looking at what am I paying tomorrow, what's going to happen next week, what concert am I going to go to, what this is. We're look, we are living such kind of lives, but God is calling us to a higher place. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. He's knocking on the doors of the hearts of people right now. He's telling us to arise, awake. The time is now. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a lot of craziness going on. Amen. So if the church is together, if we come together, we're going to impact our neighbors, we're going to impact other places of work where we work and all that. Amen. If you have your Bible, let's go in the book of Acts, chapter 2, from verse 40 to 46, as I conclude this morning. Amen. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will break these things down for us. Amen. Even as we leave, as we go, as we celebrate Pastor's birthday. Amen. This very day. Amen. I pray that God will continue ministering to us. Amen. If you're there, say amen. Acts is in the New Testament. Verse 
verse 40 to 46. Acts is after the four Gospels of the New Testament. If you're, if you're still looking at, for it like I'm doing right now. All right, if you're there, just read it loud. Amen. Hallelujah. That's where the church started from. Everybody was together. They were in unity. They were concerned about each other's. Amen. They were concerned about each other. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says that they continuously or steadfastly. The Bible says here they, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. Amen. 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 The Bible says steadfastly they continue the doctrine. What's the doctrine? It's the teaching. Amen. When pastor stands here to preach, or when somebody stands here to preach, amen, it's not as a formality, just come, oh, blah, 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 give words, and then, oh, hallelujah, is it done? Let's go home. Amen. I remember when we were, uh, when we were I was an altar boy, I showed, I showed pastor and uh, my wife the church where we used to altar boy. I was an altar boy. I was in the Catholic church as an altar boy. Amen. Church was always one hour. Amen. But then we had this one priest. Amen. He made church to be 35 minutes. I loved that priest so much. <laughs> For Zorin, 35 minutes, we're done, we're out. Amen. This guy, you know how they conduct themselves, you know, when the priest is coming to the altar, they walk so slow. This guy is 100 miles per hour to the priest. One thing to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. He's the bad, you know how they lift the, you know, Holy Communion, it goes so slow. He's the Holy Communion and this and this. This guy was always like, the Holy Communion, the blood, uh, put in the mouth. No, 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 let's go. Done. Let's go home. Amen. It was like a formality. Amen. Amen. But now we are in a new era. We are in a church where the spirit of the Lord is. Amen. This is the place where we should be revived, rejuvenated. Amen. When pastor says something or when a preacher is preaching something, open up your ears, open up your eyes. Come expecting to get something from the Lord. When you get something from here, when you go out there, it's, it's what is going to help you to overcome. It's what's going to help you to go through the day, through the week, or through the month. Amen. Just open up your eyes. Open up your ears. Open up. Just open up yourself to the spirit of the Lord. Amen. The difference between witchcraft and being in the Holy Ghost is one. We don't force the Holy Ghost. Amen. You can't force things. You can't force things with the Holy Ghost. You must be willing and open. Hallelujah. Your heart must be willing and open. I can come here and uh, throw kinds of tongues out there and lay hands on you and we lay feet on you. But if your heart is closed, nothing is going to happen. Amen. But when you open up your heart, when you open up your ears, when you open up your eyes to see, amen, then the Spirit of the Lord comes in. And the Bible declares when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us, we shall receive what? We shall receive power. Hallelujah. So the Bible talks about the doctrine. The doctrine is the teaching. Amen? It's the teaching. I know before this man comes here to preach, or before anybody comes here to, here to preach, they don't just wake up in the morning and say, okay, let me go preach. They pray. They seek God. They fast. They pray. They put in some time. Amen? But I pray that our hearts and our souls, when it comes to the doctrine, to the teaching and the preaching of the word, I pray that our hearts will be 
a fertile ground. It will be a ground where seed is going to grow. And when the seed grows, you know, other people are going to benefit from the fruit. That's how it happens. When the word comes in your life, it makes you grow. And when you grow, you bear fruit. Fruit is not for you. Fruit is for other people to eat. Fruit, when you bear fruit, you don't eat the fruit. I'm supposed to enjoy the fruit from you. I'm supposed to enjoy the love, the kindness, the peace from you. That's what it is. Amen. Amen. When we get the word that is being preached here and we take it to heart and we are not only be hearers but also doers of the word, then fruits come up. And when fruits come up, other people enjoy the fruit. And when they enjoy the fruit, then they come, they come to the place. Amen. How many of you would love to go to a tree that doesn't bear fruit? You continue to go to a, fruit, a tree that doesn't bear fruit. I got two trees here. There's a tree here with fruit and another tree without fruit. How many of you run to a tree without fruit when you're hungry? The world is hungry. It's looking for a place to eat spiritually. They are hungry. So many people are lost out there. There's so many things coming up. People are selling all kinds of stuff out there. Amen. We've got the best stuff. We've got life in us. We've got Jesus in life, in, in our lives. Amen. We've got Jesus who gives life. He's in us. We're supposed to be giving life out there. Amen. We're supposed to be that tree that bears fruit. Amen. But fruit doesn't just come like that. When the seed is planted, when Pastor Isaiah plants the seed, pray about that seed. Pray that word. That, that word will work within you. That word will grow within you. Amen. Walk the word. Do the word. Amen. And after you do the word, then fruits come out. Amen. Do you know why you find it so hard to preach the gospel even in Home Depot or wherever you are? Do you know what finds it so hard for you to preach the word of God? Because you're not letting the word germinate or circulate your life. Because the Bible says, what filleth the heart? The mouth speaketh. What is in your heart? The mouth will speak. Amen. I know I've, um, I've said the last two couple of years, I've been like in a spiritual drought. I was in a drought. I wasn't bearing any fruit. I'll tell you the truth. There was no fruit in me. There was nothing. Hey, hey. Nothing. There was not nothing. Amen. I was forcing stuff. I was, it was a drought. Uh, you know, it was that moment where I was like just walking away from everything, walking away from church, walking away from. It was, it was just, my life was in chaos. Amen. But in my heart, I knew I need God. In my heart, I knew I'm supposed to be in a place where people get fruit from me. Amen. Then I started seeking God. I started praying. I started reading the word more. My co-workers used to intimidate me because there's so much into these systems of the world, this and that, da, da, da. They, they believe in, uh, I don't know how they put it. Uh, they, they believe in these churches where they say, that they, this guy went to a church and then he came, he told me, oh, did you know that in the Bible, Jesus, Jesus, when they say uh, he fed the 5,000, he actually didn't feed the 5,000. People came with their own food. That's what they're being told out there. Then, when I was in my drought, with all the knowledge, with everything I've seen in God, I, I just looked at the guy. I said, oh, it's not the truth. And then I just walked away. But after some time, it was like, have you watched the commercial of uh, Dope? You should have a V8. Have you had that commercial? Something clicked. Hey. I was like, no, 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 no. I went back to the guy. I said, no, 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 no. Read your Bible. What does the Bible say? And nowadays, most of the time when we have an argument or anything, or he doesn't agree on anything, it is so quick, so easy for me. It just comes out naturally. I just say, the Bible says this. It just comes out. And he'll shut up. Amen. But how many of us are, I'm not saying I'm there yet. I'm still seeking God. I need more. Amen. I know where I'm at. It's not where I'm supposed to be. I know I'm supposed to be somewhere greater, somewhere higher. Amen. But I'm just trying to encourage us this morning. When the pastor preaches, when somebody preaches the word out here, let that word germinate within you. Let that word work within you. Work on that word. Do it. Do what it says and you'll see the results. Amen. Our God is not a liar. Amen. The Bible declares that they sold all their possessions, all their goods and everything. They gave everybody. 
They gave everybody, they gave everybody their stuff. They cared about everybody. Amen. But we are in a situation, we are in a world, we are in a church, we are in a, a place whereby everybody is looking out for themselves. They're not looking out for anybody else. Amen. The church, God has called us to be one. God has called us to be one. When she's sick, I'm sick. When she has a headache, I got a headache. That's the place that God is calling us to be in. Amen. In our church in Uganda, when somebody fell sick and they were in the hospital and they were admitted in the hospital, you know how hospitals are in Africa when you are admitted. Amen. The one thing that used to happen was always one. The only way they would tell that this person is a born again Christian is the amount of people that would come and visit this person and pray and also pray for the neighbors and uh, preach to the to the people in that same word. Amen. Amen. One day, a friend of mine was sick in the hospital. And, and that's what she said. But finally, she died. She went to be with the Lord. She went to be with the Lord. But before she went to be with the Lord, she spent like uh, two months in the hospital. The two months she spent in the hospital, every person that was put beside her bed received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because... Because of how the church conducted itself. When you're sick, we are sick with you. When you're down, we are down with you. We're going to lift you up. We're going to work together. We're going to be in unity. We're going to show you love. We're going to be there. Amen. That's the place that God is calling us to be in. He's calling us to walk together. He's calling us for a three-legged race. Walk together. And when the world sees that, nobody can resist that. No one is going to resist that. Amen. When they see the unity, when they see the power coming out of the church, no one is going to resist the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Bible declares that so many people, because of that, it says that so many wonders were made. Miracles happened. So many things. Where are the miracles in the church nowadays? And people sick? And people lame and people having all kinds of issues, something is going on. Amen. God is calling us to that place to pray, to seek him, to go to that higher place. He's calling. He's not calling the pastor. It's not the pastor's responsibility. He's calling all of us. Amen. He's calling all of us to pray and to seek his face in unity, in oneness. Amen. The time is now. Don't be left behind. The Bible declares that war unto Jerusalem because Jerusalem didn't know his visitation or did know her visitation. Amen. There's a visitation coming. There is a mighty wind coming. There is a mighty thing that is going to happen. Are you ready? Are you going to be in position? Are you going to be in that place? Are you going to be in the place where that thing is going to happen? Amen. 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 I'm, I'm preaching this message because I know I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my bones. Amen. That something is going to happen. Something big is going to happen. But don't be left behind. In this place. In this church. Amen. As I wind up. In 1998, I was up on our church. Um, before they put up the roof, there was a balcony. Acted as the roof. I was up there praying. In the night. I was praying in the night. Uh, by then I was 18. Oh, sweet 18. Yes. I was praying in the night. Cold in the night. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Praying for the church. Praying for this and this. Amen. I was praying for the ministry. I was praying for church. He met one of the um, he met one of the ministers. There was a minister in the church who didn't believe in uh, deliverance and demons and all that. So we are praying that God will move and that was the time that God was delivering so many people from demons. And We had witch doctors come to those night prayers being delivered, being set free. There is a night where we were praying. A guy came from, uh, wherever he came from, he had poured gasoline on his himself, drenched in gasoline uh, with a match. He came running into the church. He came to kill himself in the church that night. But when he was at the petrol station, he was supposed to kill himself at the petrol station, at the gas station. But he had a voice telling him, just walk, walk, continue walking. He continued walking but pouring gasoline on himself and trying to light the match on, you know. But the match wouldn't work, wouldn't work, continue walking. But there was a voice leading him, 
it led him to the prayer meeting where we are. So we're in that church, walking, passing, back and forth, praying, interceding in the night. And the guy comes in, it smells like, uh, you know, guy comes in and, you know, gasoline is everywhere. You could smell it. He wanted to light himself up. He couldn't. We are praying. And because of the prayers, we're able to catch the guy. We tackled him, put him down, prayed for him, prayed for him. After two weeks, the guy was a Kenyan. He went to Kenya and then he came back after two weeks. He gave a testimony in church. He's like, oh, praise the Lord. I thank God I was going to die and all that. But that reminded me that if there were no people in that church praying that night, that moment, that moment, there were no people praying that time, what would have happened to that guy? He would be dead by now. What am I trying to say? That there are so many people's lives out there, family members, friends, that are depending on your prayers. They're waiting for you to get on your knees and pray and seek God. Amen. Now, I'm reminded. I'm reminded of nah, 98. I was telling you 98. I was on the balcony praying. Praying. And uh, I got a vision. Like, you're, th you're down there. You're, you're, you know, I got a vision from the Lord. And the vision was... Um, there was firewood. And there was smoke coming out of firewood. There was smoke coming out of firewood and there was light in there. But I was struggling so hard to make a fire. But there was smoke in there, which meant that there was a fire within that. You know, you know how we make the three stones and cook? I don't know how you guys put it here, but people who don't have, people who use fire, firewood in Uganda, they have, uh, they get three stones, three big stones, one, two, three. They put the firewood on the side and then they put the pot on top, you know. So I was struggling in the vision to make the fire to come up. I was blowing it and blowing it and blowing it and blowing it. And I had this voice tell me, not yet, not yet, not yet. And in me, I was like, why? Why not now? I'm cold. We need to cook. We need to eat. We need to do something. As in the vision. I was just taken up somewhere in the vision. And the voice was like, when the time is right, the fire will blow. But keep blowing. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Blowing air into the, you know, the smoke to, to create the fire. You know you, how you... When it's about, you know, before it makes the flame, there's always smoke, so you're trying to blow it to, to, to bring a flame. Keep, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. Amen. Last week as I was praying, praying, because I knew I was ministering today, I was praying, seeking God, praying. In my truck, my church truck. <laughs> praying. Uh, when I'm driving to these other places, I'm praying. Uh, I'm in tongues. And sometimes people look at you when they stop and you know, you're in, you're even banging the steering wheel. Devil, come on, I'll go in the name of Jesus. Some people will look at you like, oh, he's weird. Oh, a weird guy over there. Probably I'm on YouTube somewhere. I don't know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> the voice told me, the time has come. Blow the fire or the flame is coming. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I speak that because I believe it and I know it. I don't know what is going to happen, but I know something is breaking free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen? It's not breaking free anywhere else because I'm not in Uganda right now. All I know, I'm here. I'm in this church. I'm here. I know something is going to happen. I don't know how you feel, but I know in the atmosphere. I don't know anybody in here how you feel, but I know something. That is, it's, like, it's like we're close. We're close to something. There is something right there. You know? If we tire, you know, if we wait a little bit long, if we blow a little bit longer and keep in there and pray and pray and pray, God is shaking my life. Amen. There's so many skeletons that I had I had hidden in the in the closet. The stuff that I, you know, I was like, eh. And God is trying to sort my life out, bringing this. Oh, this is not gonna haunt you again. I'm gonna bring it out now. So it's out of the way. You know how clear the way is? You clear the way. You get all the stones out of the way for the rest. For three-legged rest. Clearing the way. Amen. Something is going to happen in this place. There is a reason. 
why there were so many people in this church. A shaking came. They left. There is a reason. There is a reason why I'm here. There is a reason why you're here. There is a reason why you who is here, you're here today. Amen. And I pray, and I pray, and I believe, and I pray that the Spirit of God, my witness, that this week will speak to somebody in Jesus' mighty name. Because the Bible says the witness of two or three shall do what? God is up to something. God is up to something. Unity. 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 In families, in this church, unity. 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 Something is going to happen. Something good. Amen. And then you're going to look back two years or three years or five years from now, you're going to look back and then you're going to say Ebenezer. You know what Ebenezer means? This far the Lord has helped us. Other versions say, this far the Lord has brought us. I want you to be part of that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I just want to encourage us this morning. Let's get on our, on our feet in Jesus' mighty name. As I'm going to pray in the name of Jesus. I'm just led to have the pastor come up front. We're going to stretch our hands towards him. We're going to pray for him.